Good afternoon, everybody, um, and thank you for joining us at this webinar, sharing your lunchtime with us. My name is Emily Finlay, and I'm the coordinator of communication and engagement for North Coast Local Land Services, and I'm going to be your host for today's webinar. The, today's uh, session will go for approximately an hour, and there'll be a presentation followed by some question time. And I just wanted to let you know that we aren't using uh, any cameras or webcams today because that does draw down on people's bandwidth. So we want to have everybody to have the best access that they can and to be able to hear uh, all the information we're sharing. So we won't be using cameras today. Before we get any further into today's um, proceedings, I'd like to acknowledge uh, do acknowledge of country. I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet and pay my respects to their elders past, present and future. And I would like to extend that respect to any Aboriginal people present with us today. So thank you very much for your interest in attending our local strategic plan webinar today. As a valued partner of North Coast Local Land Services, this webinar will give us an opportunity to introduce you to our proposed strategic direction for the next five years. And it's designed as an information sharing session to provide you with an early look at the draft local strategic plan before it goes open for public comment next week. As I mentioned before, the session will consist of a presentation by our general manager, Louise Orr, and followed by an opportunity for you to ask questions. Joining Louise and myself today, we have a number of uh, representatives from our leadership team. That, that includes our operations manager, L Lauren Wilson, and team leaders of Natural Assets Program, Justine Graham, Sustainable Agriculture, Emmeline Froggett, and team leader of strategy, Mr. Graham Moss. And they're available to answer any technical or specific area specific questions today. So when we get to question time, Louise might refer your question to one of our um, members of the leadership team. So how do you get your questions to us? Well, if you have a, there's a chat, public chat area there, please type your questions into that chat box and we will collate them and we will respond to those questions after Louise has finished um, her presentation. Everybody can see the questions that you put into the chat, so you might want to keep, a, keep a, um, an eye on what other people are asking as well. So I'd like to get started today. I'd introduce you to uh, Louise Orr. She's the General Manager of, local, of North Coast Local Land Services. Louise has been here with us since May 2017, and she's led the North Coast Local Land Services team through a number of changes and challenges during that time. And for those of us who live and work on the North Coast, we know that those challenges have involved droughts, floods, bushfires, and of course the current COVID-19 pandemic. If we're just waiting for the presentation to become live. Thank you, Emily. Really appreciate that. And I'd just like to say um, hello and welcome to everyone as well. And I'd just like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land that I'm meeting with you all today. That's the Arakwa people of the Bundjalung Nation. I'd just like to acknowledge um, those traditional uh, custodians and their um, leaders past, present and emerging. So welcome to this uh, webinar for our North Coast LLS Draft Local Strategic Plan. For those of you who um, know local land services, our current strategic plan finalises this year and so we've been going through the hard work of reviewing it and coming up with our next five year strategic plan. So the purpose of the presentation I'm going to give you today is to introduce you to that local strategic plan to show you the links through to our statewide um, LLS strategic plan, the purpose, the goals, our focus, our programs and measures of success, um, how you can provide feedback through the public consultation period and ask any questions you might have on specific areas um, that I talk to in, um, in the plan. I'd just like to shout out as well while I've got a moment to the team who put this together, this is actually my first webinar, um, so please be understanding if I make any mistakes, but I've got a, an amazing team sitting behind me who've um, 
run a lot of webinars now for North Coast LLS and they're very good at it. So all uh, errors that are made would be mine. Um, theirs will run very smoothly. All right, so to get into the presentation now, I want to draw your attention to the fact that we do have a state local land services strategic plan. So of course North Coast LLS is one of 11 regions across New South Wales. Um, that state local land services strategic plan articulates the premier's priorities um, which we have to work towards, our legislative and policy obligations and the critical functions and core pillars that we have to deliver uh, in our role as a land management agency. So just letting you know that our um, state outcome indicator is enhanced management and productivity of New South Wales land. Um, we are held accountable to that state outcome indicator so everything we do has to form up um, and, and, uh, and achieve against that. And I have to say that New South Wales Treasury now, they measure our performance against how we track towards that indicator. So it's very important for us that we make sure that our core pillars that we deliver across and anything that we do is very clearly ensuring that we are enhancing the management and productivity of New South Wales land. So with our draft local strategic plan, this actually articulates um, the regional focus or the regional uh, journey that we take to achieving the Premier's priorities and those legislative and policy obligations and the critical functions that we deliver. But it's very much how we do it for this region. Uh, the two plans therefore operate at different scales but they have connected outcomes. There is a line of sight between the two strategies and the goals and the measures of success and the programs that we deliver as part of that. So first of all, I'll get into what we've developed as our purpose. And I, at this point, I'd like to acknowledge the Board of Local Land Services in the North Coast who've had uh, a lot of input. It is their role to guide the strategic direction of the organisation. And so they've had a lot of uh, input into what this will look like. And they've come out for, um, with this purpose that we deliver knowledge, services and products to generate healthy and productive North Coast landscapes for thriving, resilient communities and biosecure, profitable and sustainable primary industries. Um, as you can see, it's a big purpose, but that's because our portfolio across all aspects of land management is huge and I'll get to that a little bit later. So we also have strategic goals that we strive for and these are um, somewhat aspirational because we all believe that you have to have aspirational goals um, and set yourself uh, something to achieve that's not just business as usual. So we've set our strategic goals as to drive innovation and excellence in the delivery of landscape management, biosecurity, emergency management and primary production. They are the four core pillars of land management that LLS delivers against. Um, we have set ourselves a goal to deliver excellence in customer service and increase our customer engagement. Uh, we're a very customer focused organisation so we're very aware that we are the delivery organisation for land management and we want to make sure that we deliver excellence in customer service and make sure our customers are responded to and are provided with the information and services that they need. Uh, we also have a goal to engage communities in targeted services and programs that address climate variability and land use impacts. Emily touched on uh, the challenges that we've had in the last four years that I've been here. So climate change is a very real issue in the North Coast. We're right at the forefront of it and we absolutely have to address that. We also need to recognise that um, North Coast region is a rapidly changing re region and that there's a lot of land use transition and impacts as a result of that. So we really want to make sure that we're addressing that as well. Um, our focus, we have, uh, we want to be innovative across our entire business. So we're always looking at ways to do things um, uh, more sustainably, more effectively, more efficiently. Uh, we want to maintain situational awareness as to what is happening. 
um, in the present, but also be forward-looking um, and not just responding to what has happened, but can anticipate and forecast. And we really hope that you'll see in this plan that we've made a uh, deliberate uh, attempt to do that, to position ourselves to be very forward-looking. Um, as I've mentioned before, we need to tackle existing and emerging change, particularly climate change, land use change, and that land use transition, so small and new land managers. There's a lot of people coming into the North Coast and, you know, who can blame them? It's an amazing place to live and work. Uh, however, that brings with it its own challenges, so we really want to work with those new land managers and land managers of small properties uh, to ensure that we are um, enhancing land management across all scales of land management. Um, we also really want to seek enduring investment to tackle long-term environmental change, so we recognise that short-term funding cycles uh, make it really difficult for us to address ongoing uh, issues. Uh, as I said, planning for future impact. So one of the things we, we're really trying to do is shift, uh, shift the way that we talk to our landholders about preparing for the next climate extreme event rather than just responding to the one that has just happened. Yes, we help landholders through that period, but we really want to position them to be aware of the climate change impacts that are coming and how they can, uh, how we can work with them to help them address those. Um, so really it's about enabling land managers to cope with change, risks, uncertainty and also opportunity. There's a lot of opportunity that comes with that as well and we want to make sure we can position our land managers and our stakeholders uh, to achieve those opportunities and do it through a partnerships approach. So I've talked a bit about our four core pillars. I just want to draw your attention to that now. We've got four core, what we consider the four core pillars of LLS, and that is landscape management, which is really uh, where we deal with our native vegetation management, healthy country, which is the program that we um, work towards with our Aboriginal custodians. Uh, we have an aquatic and terrestrial landscapes protection and restoration framework and of course we're a public land manager in that we also manage travelling stock reserves. Biosecurity is huge for the North Coast and that encompasses pest animals, weeds and animal biosecurity and welfare. And I'd just like to say over the last four years we haven't talked about that so far but we've also dealt with some of the emerging biosecurity issues as well. Um, including yellow crazy ants that we've been dealing with for the last three years. Um, a fall armyworm is another one, capra beetle. And we also uh, have a huge uh, weeds problem, of course, due to those climate events that are happening continually. Emergency management, I'll get that into a bit later, but that's really how we help our landholders to plan and prepare um, for future uh, potential climate uh, events and also any biosecurity emergencies and also how we help um, in the response of that at the time. The primary production, so we deal with emerging markets and partners as well as our existing markets and partners and we look at how we restore landscapes and productive areas through that uh, particular pillar as well. We have cross-cutting programs um, and probably the main one is our Future Ready Farms program. So that supports integrated farm planning across natural resource management, new and small landholder biosecurity. Those new and small landholders that I talked about before uh, are often the source of some of our biosecurity issues and that's simply because those landholders may not understand or have knowledge of the biosecurity issues that um, are prevalent in the region. So of course the Future Ready Farms also incorporates other biosecurity issues such as pests and weeds. Plant biosecurity is a really big issue in the North Coast, something that we recognised a few years ago and we now have a dedicated plant biosecurity officer within the region. Um, we aim to provide a futures forecast going forward, so letting our customers and stakeholders not only know about, uh, about what the kind of climate um, variability that they can expect, but also what we're seeing in, in uh, Productive productivity markets, what we're seeing in innovative approaches to land management and things like that. Um, and the focus for our agricultural industries will be on 
grazing, broadacre cropping and horticulture and intensive livestock. So that Future Ready Farms program really reaches across all of those four core pillars. We also provide enabling services. We have a business support team that supports all of the um, operational teams that operate in those four core pillars. Um, and as you can see from that, there's an awful lot needs to happen to make sure that we can deliver uh, what we say we want to do. I'm just going to go quickly uh, through the four core pillars. So in the landscape management, we have three strategic directions within each pillar and each strategic direction has its own measure of success. So you can clearly see what, our, um, what we're aiming to achieve and how we're going to measure whether or not we've hit that or not. Um, in the landscape management, as I said before, we really want to drive long-term investment um, to deliver long-term on-ground impacts that benefit environment, primary producers and communities. We want to connect with and work with partners to build resilience in and restore and conserve North Coast landscapes. And we also want to empower Aboriginal communities and traditional owners to achieve their aspirations on country. So we have measures of success against each of those three strategic directions. In the biosecurity area, once again, three strategic directions and three measures of success that correlate with those. Um, we want to increase uh, land managers, stakeholder and community awareness and capacity to achieve their biosecurity responsibility. So we have a Biosecurity Act in New South Wales and within that act uh, it does put the responsibility to everyone to be aware of and do something about biosecurity. So we really want to work with people so that they know what that means and they feel assisted in how they deliver against it as well. We want to drive the uptake of biosecurity and animal welfare responsibilities in new and small landholders so they may not be aware of the Biosecurity Act, they may not be aware of what that means for them. So we really want to uh, raise awareness and practice change within that cohort. So we're very targeted about that group. Um, and we also want to enhance the capacity of communities and ourselves to effectively respond to current and emerging biosecurity risks. So that very much links into our emergency management area as well, that if we are prepared, we can help our customers and stakeholders to be better prepared also. So a good segue into emergency management. Uh, as you'll see, following the format, three key directions, three measures of success. We want to drive resilience of North Coast community to prepare for, prevent, respond to and recover from emergencies and emerging risks. We want to actively resource and deliver community recovery actions and we want to improve our own efficiency and effectiveness in responding to emergency events through partnerships and collaboration with key stakeholders. So we're very aware that, as I said, the work is not just how we can prepare, but it's also how um, other how our stakeholders can prepare too. And if you're more prepared, that you're better able to respond and recover. Um, for our final core pillar, uh, one of our most important ones is primary production. So we have three strategic directions in that and three corresponding measures of success. We provide knowledge to guide and actively support emerging and transitioning enterprises, industries and markets to be healthy, productive and profitable. We want to increase communities' awareness and capacity to improve soil productivity, water and land management through knowledge and implementation of best practice. And we also want to position ourselves to be a leading independent and trusted service provider. So we want to work with industry, with landholders, um, but also we want to make sure that we're doing that through a community awareness and capacity. So there's practice change built into that as well. So we have uh, a number of enabling services that, sh uh, that as, as I said before, we have a, a key business support team that enables us to achieve all those goals that we have set ourselves for. We obviously have to manage our assets, um, we have to engage and we have a, uh, a new landholder administration and web portal that's coming online to enable us to do that. Um, and we have to focus on our people. Um, I think if our, if 
if local land services staff are engaged and supported, then we should be able to achieve those goals. But it, we really need to focus on our people as well. Workplace health and safety is obviously a big part of that. So we have a very clear measure of success that we do not have fatalities, serious or lost time injuries within LLS. And we, and we do take that very seriously, especially given that we send our field officers into some quite um, challenging situation, so we make sure they're fully trained, that they're confident in what they do. I mentioned before we're a customer service organisation. We take that very seriously as well. We um, are determined to maintain high customer satisfaction and have a net promoter score to suit. Um, and we rate ourselves, so we have a uh, an internal and external rated, rating system, so people can give us feedback on how our customer service is. So now to how you can give feedback on this. So the formal consultation period actually opens on the 10th of May. So we're running these two informational webinars today just to give uh, additional information on that. But the formal consultation period actually opens on the 10th of May and runs through to the 6th of June. Um, you can make a formal submission to that on the North Coast Local Land Services Have Your Say website. So once that portal opens, you can go into that. You can participate in an online survey. Uh, there's five multiple choice questions, plus there's open or free text space for your comments as well. There's also a lot of supporting information. So you'll see all of what I've presented to you just now, plus you'll see a supporting narrative that sits under that and goes into a bit more detail as to what the programs are and how we're actually what it actually looks like for us to deliver against those strategic directions. Um, and that's all available through that Have Your Say portal. So that's it. I'm worn out. I'll have to have a drink of water now after going through all of this. Um, but I'm more than happy to take any questions. Uh, as Emily mentioned before, you can put them in the chat uh, as well. So if there's anything you specifically wanted to ask me, if you wanted to get some more detail on something now, and remember that I do have uh, some of our specialist staff on hand as well uh, from our agriculture team, our natural resources team and our operations and strategy team so they can answer any questions you might have also. So th there's a question in the chat there about how the plan supports pest planning. So pest obviously falls into the biosecurity area. That's one of our four core pillars. Um, and we do have a regional uh, pest animal management plan that we have gone out to our stakeholders and they have endorsed that plan. We're now into the implementation phase of that plan, so we've identified what are our priority pests in the North Coast, and then the implementation is how we're going to actually direct our resourcing to address, um, to address control of those pests. I might throw to Lauren and see if she wants to add any more to that. No, I think you've uh, covered it there, Louise. We do still have the yeah the pest advisory committee that um, uh, you know sort of sits within this local strategic plan and as a as a key advisory group um, to us as well. Great, thanks, thanks Louise. for that. I've got another question here, um, one that came in to us a bit earlier. So the question is that um, the, the questioner was happy to see climate change included in our plan and they wanted to know whether will this look at forecasts and assist getting, assist getting a better, bigger picture in the region of what a change in climate might mean for producers. I'll just pop that in the chat so other participants can read that question. Yeah, that, look, that's a really good question and something that we absolutely wanted to address. As I said, since I've come to this region, I've dealt with, uh, we've, you know, we've had to go through two floods, a drought, a bushfire, and now we're in the, you know, the COVID pandemic. So climate change for us is very, very real, um, and we are absolutely aware that it's starting to impact on our natural resource management base as well as our industries as well. Uh, 
Lauren Wilson, the operations team manager, and Emily Froggett from the sustainable ag team are here, and they've come up with the futures forecast that I was talking about uh, earlier on in the presentation. I might throw to Lauren, and you can talk about that in a bit more detail of, of how, what that might mean for producers and how it might help them, Lauren. Sure. Thanks, Louise. Um, I guess the the future forecast is a component of the future ready farms, and uh, it's really about trying to understand what's what's happening on the ground now, uh, but also what's coming. Um, you know, what's coming up? What what sort of risk is there? What sort of opportunity? And getting messages out early to producers and the community about managing those risks and taking advantage of those opportunities. So uh, we will have a calendar sort of element to it. We, we all know the sort of farming calendar, but it's what we're really trying to achieve here is be quick in responding, quick in getting those messages out about risk uh, so that we can assist producers and their community with uh, to make those decisions and make those decisions early. Um, and that's, that's a lesson that we've certainly learnt from, you know, the drought that we went through. So that's that's something that we're looking to build and excited about building with our um, ag extension team, but also all of our operational teams um, through biodiversity, you know, pest management, uh, animal health, and biosecurity um, as well as natural uh, asset protection. Yeah, thanks for that, Lauren. Um, and I will uh, I will just reiterate that climate change is huge for us in this region, and it was one of the. You can imagine that um, uh, when we went through the process with the board of developing this local strategic plan, um, you know there was quite a lot of things that we were discussing, but climate change was pretty much the one constant that everybody wanted to see in there, and it was one of the key uh, the key focuses that this plan absolutely had to have was how we are going to work with our landholders um, and prepare and respond to climate change impacts. Um, there was another question that came through earlier about the biggest challenges to achieving the goals in the strategic plan. Um, look, I've got to say the more extreme weather events and um, uh, emergency management, uh, emergency management events that we have to deal with, uh, the less we can focus on actually working to the plan. So that's definitely a challenge for us. We spent five months in the emergency management response for the bushfire event in 2019 and 2020. Uh, so that meant our staff were working on assisting landholders to, um, to just get through that uh, that particular event and therefore not engaged in business as usual. Um, so that definitely is a challenge for us. Uh, at the flood events that we've just been through in the mid-north coast, um, once again, that, that's taken six weeks and we're still in delivering bushfire recovery as we've gone through that flood again as well. So I definitely think climate change is a huge challenge for us. The other one would absolutely be budget and funding. Obviously, we can only resource this plan and we can only deliver if we are funded to deliver it. So, And we have our legislative obligations that we absolutely have to deliver against. And then, of course, there's, you know, there's all the other areas that we can absolutely see are valuable, but if we don't have the funding, um, a big part of this plan is working with stakeholders and partnering. So. I do think that the more partnerships and the more collaboration that we have, then we can uh, al align our funding with funding from other organisations and, and that way we get much better value for our customers and for our landscapes. Louise, there's another question here um, we, got, we got before about primary production. So in the primary production space, it's quite challenging with the, the impacts of climate change, which you've mentioned uh, previously. What, what types of new markets? Uh, are we thinking about? Uh, look, I'm going to throw to Emmeline, who's our team leader for sustainable agriculture, and she's um, a, a bit of an expert, obviously far better than I am, I have to say. So I'm happy for Emmeline to respond to that, the kind of markets that we're seeing already um, and how we work with them. 
Uh, yeah, love. we've noticed a lot of agricultural producers are shifting what they grow in our region. Uh, a common one is our dairy industry is moving into beef and our cane industries are moving into pecans and macadamia. So it is a really challenging space and it's changing all the time. A bit closer to Wulgulga we see our blueberry farmers moving into cucumbers. It's, um, yeah, it's definitely a challenging space as people try and adapt the best they can to our ever-changing climate that's happening. So we're seeking to keep abreast of what's happening out there and find programs that can assist them uh, remain productive on their land even though our climate is uh, quite extreme at times. Louise, I've got a question um, from uh, about small holdings. So. You mentioned earlier that there's a changing demographic on the north coast and there's an increase in number of small landholders and lifestyle farmers moving into the region. How do you think that the local strategic plan would support those particular land managers? Uh, so that's a really good question because we have talked about new and small landholders quite a bit and how we really need to address and uh, and I guess raise awareness and also practice change within that cohort. So we have actually had a program running for the last uh, for the last couple of years called the Every Bit Counts, which was really an engagement program to start going out and engaging with those new and small landholders. We are very aware that some of them, this might be their first foray into land management for whether it's for a productive region reason or whether it's for a lifestyle, lifestyle reason. So we wanted to give them somewhere they could go um, online and find that information as to how to do that. Um, as I mentioned before, the biosecurity issues. So we know that we get a lot of uh, biosecurity um, issues and challenges from people who may not be aware of the Biosecurity Act and what the obligations are or they may not be aware that a practice that they're doing is actually a biosecurity risk for the region. So we definitely want to go out and engage with them for that. Obviously it's critical for us that we keep North Coast, um, that we control pest weeds and diseases in the North Coast and that we particularly jump on any uh, emerging issues as well. Um, I've got Justine Graham online and she managed that Every Bit Counts project so she might want to talk through a little bit more what that might look like as well. Thanks Louise. Uh, yeah, I think you, the uh, Every Bit Counts program that we've, we've been running for the last two and a half years has really recognised that all of us, small land holdings, really have the same, um, the same risk to the region in terms of biosecurity and in terms of questions that a lot of our larger um, holdings or, or primary producers might have. So really we've spent a lot of time tailoring a lot of existing information to this landholder group uh, and also a big capacity building component in enabling those small landholders to first recognise that they have a role to play in how our whole landscape's managed even though their little piece is quite small. Uh, and secondly, that, we're, that we are here to support them and we have an awful lot of really valuable information that they can use and some support available uh, to help them do the right thing. As Louise said, it often is just a, a lack of awareness. People move and buy land not realising what their obligations are. So I think we've set ourselves up well over the last few years to, to go forward into this, this space of um, tackling change in the environment and in our, in our um, landholder base. Uh, to cover off on that, I think. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. When we were talking about risk and uncertainty before, we really want to help uh, landholders who um, who are faced with risk and are uncertain as to how to deal with that and provide them with information and also opportunities potentially as well. So yeah, thanks for that, Justine. I appreciate um Emily, I'm just wondering if there were more questions. Yeah, I just I think what we'll do for those of you who've joined us uh, for the, the webinar today, if you, we'll give you a few more minutes. If you've got any um, other questions from the floor, now's your chance to, to pop them in the chat. Yeah, great. Thanks for that, Emily. And I might quickly just run through the next step. So as I said, the public exhibition opens on the 10th of May, which is Monday. Um, and runs for, I think it's approximately five weeks. 
Um, you can see the Have Your Say uh, um, website address is there on the presentation and we'll be providing that as well. If you go on to our website online, you, you'll be able to see where you can stream into that portal. And then we're really keen for uh, people to give us their feedback. Do they think that this is what LLS should be focusing on as a land management agency um, for New South Wales? Is this what we should be focusing on? And is this what we should be delivering against? Uh, uh, you know, it's good to see the feedback that people are, are really pleased to see climate change in there. Um, is there something else that you would have, you were expecting to see in there and that maybe is not covered off um, through how we're approaching those four pillars? So yeah, uh, any any feedback is really good feedback, and we'll be able to work through that and take it into what will hopefully be our um, final version of the plan and that will go to our Minister Adam Marshall sometime in July for his sign off. Um, I'm just wondering Emily if there was anything else I needed to add to um, that or if I've covered it off? No, I don't, I don't think so. Um, I don't think there's any more questions uh, from the floor either Louise. So I guess um, we can finish that for this afternoon. I just wanted to thank you all who have attended for your interest in the work that North Coast Local Land Services does and in the strategic planning process. And to let you know that this webinar has been recorded and that you can watch it back at your leisure. An email will be sent out uh, later on today letting you know when that rec recording is available and it will also be posted on our YouTube channel. This is the first of two webinars we're doing today, so there's another one that's happening this evening at 7 o'clock. And the Have Your Say portal will go live uh, on Monday, so if you're interested in making a submission, a formal submission, keep your eyes out. Uh, there'll be that will be promoted on our social media and in other forms. Thanks very much for participating today, and I hope that you um, travel safely for the rest of your day. Yeah, thank you, and thank you, Emily and the team. I really appreciate uh, pulling all this together and being able to deliver it on behalf of North Coast Local Land Services. Thank you.